Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. Two days ago, the federal government released the framework for the national conference set to begin at the end of this month. Our next guest was the chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee on the proposed national conference. His team traveled across Nigeria seeking the views of Nigerians on how the national conference will proceed. In December of 2013, they submitted their report to President Goodluck Jonathan on the basis of which this government framework emerged. Senator Femi Okunromo, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you. So, I'm glad to be with you. Yeah, Senator, let me start by, you know, at the beginning, many people were skeptical about the intentions of the president, but you were among the few who believed that the president was serious about this national conference. Do, do you feel vindicated? I feel very vindicated. Of course, everything that has happened since then shows that the president is very, very serious about having this national conference and is very sincere that he really wants to bring about a positive change mm. for Nigerians. Now, because he has not wasted any time at all in dealing with our report. And within the sort of our submitting our report, we have been able to come out with a final with a set of modalities mm. based upon our report of how the conference will be organized. Yeah. So I, I that all this has vindicated my confidence mm. in the president. Now, the framework was just published, and uh, I want to ask you, did it meet your expectations uh, or, or the did recommendations it? of your committee? Yes. Well, the government basically by accepted the recommendations of our committee. You know, the, where there were changes, the changes were carried out with our full participation. In other words, we sat down with government to look at those areas where they thought there should be changes. And the, the changes were not affected by government alone, by, but by us in, in collaboration with the government. Mm. And the only area of change was in the manner of selection of the delegates. What, now, well, what did you in recommend? Our original report, yeah. We had recommended that most of the delegates should be uh, selected by election, that is not selected but elected. We went to democratic election of most of the delegates. And it's, uh, in fact, our recommendation was that nominated delegates should not be more than one third, one third of the total number of delegates, mm. so that at least two thirds of the total number would be elected. That was, our, that is the, that was the original recommendation. Mm. And that is the only aspect of our recommendation that we had to sit down with the government to review and modify. So what is what was this? Because what was it? We are not going for a total nomination of delegates mm. by the appropriate stakeholders. So what was the argument of the government that won you over to their side in terms of whether they should be elected or nominated? The argument of the government was based on the reality that to have elections, the national conference, we will need to have an electoral law which will have to empower us to have such elections. Mm. The present electoral law in Nigeria does not cover anything other than governorship and presidential or similar elections. It does not cover the kind of elections that we will need to have for this national conference. Mm. And so, if we, if we have to uh, submit a bill for, for a new electoral law, that will help us to have elections for the national conference. That must be part the whole of this year before the bill is through mm -hmm. the national assembly. So okay. that was one of the major reasons why we had to accept that having elections will not be realistic. Mm -hmm. and it was better to allow all the stakeholders in the Nigerian project to nominate their delegates. Mm -hmm. Now, um, will you play any role in the conference itself? Who? You. Will you play any role? Oh, that depends on the government. Uh, so, so far, my, my job is the uh, chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee. Mm. So, so far, we have done our job and we have completed our job. As to whether we shall play any role in the conference itself, that is up to the government to decide. Mm. 
Now, are you aware of any list of delegates out there, or uh, is the government still in the process of contacting people to be uh, the delegates? And how do you think that's possible within the time frame that we have now? No, the government has no list of delegates. You know, it was only about two days ago, I mean, this week, uh, Wednesday, that we are now for delegates and told Nigerians exactly how many delegates each each constituency or each interest group will nominate. So between Wednesday and today, so certainly uh, that is too short a time for us to already have a list of delegates. But I'm sure every constituency, every national constituency, every national interest group, they now know how many delegates they are expected to nominate. The beauty of this proposal is that the government is not nominating for any group. It is the uh, interest groups themselves that will nominate those delegates they want to represent them. Mm. For instance, when it comes to the labor, labor group, of their own accord, decide on which delegates will represent labor. Professional groups will decide which delegates will represent them. All the various uh, interest groups will decide which delegates will represent them. Mm. The, the federal government has a very minimal role to play in nominating delegates. The only delegates that will be nominated by the federal government are in two categories. First, we have uh, elder statesmen, one elder statesman from each state of the Federation. You will agree with me that no other person can nominate the elder statesmen other than the federal government. So that is one, that is 37, 37 people for the federal government to nominate, one from each state and one from the federal capital territory as elder statesmen. This, beyond that, the federal government is allocated only 20 delegates. So out of 492 delegates, they are allocated just 20, 20 delegates to be nominated by the federal government beyond the elder statesmen. Mm. So that will show you that besides more than 80 something percent of the delegates are being nominated by Nigerians themselves. Now, now Senator, let, let's look at this. I'm looking at the figures, too. Um, apart from the ones you mentioned now, you have six people from the military, six from the police, uh, state security agencies. Um, some of these yes. groups are part of the government. Um, no, 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 no. If you look at the modalities that we released, the last column of the modality says who is to do the nomination. I hope you have the modalities with you. Mm. No, you know, yeah, I, I agree. Military, yeah. It says nomination by the stakeholders. Mm. It clearly says nomination by the stakeholders. Mm. The entire military people have their own their own organization. And they, besides the, the existing military hierarchy, in collaboration with the retired military, mm. they will decide among themselves who should represent the retired military. Mm. Senator, the government is going to play no part in this. Yeah, Senator, let's, let's look at this, okay? Let's say the police, um, they, they will nominate six people. It doesn't matter who, who yeah, will the do it. The retired police, not the not active police. Oh, retired, oh, retired, police. retired, okay, okay. Retired yeah. police, okay. All right, let's, yeah. let's leave that. But it, it, we know that at, at least the government will have uh, 50 or more people to nominate uh, in this process, or people who are closely associated with the government. Now, we also <laughs> know... That the government will have what? People, uh, 60, about 60 people to nominate. And about then, 60, yes, yeah, including, including the 37 elder statesmen. Yeah, yeah. And then, yes. and then when you count the people that were formerly part of government, you find out that the government will have more people than, say, the ethnic nationalities in that conference. No, that is not government. If you say people that were formerly in government, that is not government. Okay, okay. When you talk of former senators, they are, not, they are not in government. Mm. When you talk of former governors, they are not in government. Okay, okay. All right. So you, you, don't, you don't count retired people as being in government, or you don't count people who are in government before, but are no more in government. You don't count them as being, as being government. Okay. They are not government. Mm. Okay, let's, let's look at this, the ethnic nationalities. It appears as if yeah. there was uh, emphasis was not placed on their role. I know that they have representative. Uh, they have, um, the figures I have here is, is minimal. It's, it's out of the 252 or so 
ethnic nationalities we have in Nigeria. I think a, the reservation we have for them is about 125, if I'm not. Um, no, no, we have, for instance, we have, on other is 19, I said number 19, in the extinction of the modalities. Yeah. If you have it in front of you. Yeah. Socio political, school, socio cultural, and ethnic nationality groups. We've allocated them 90, 96. 15 per geopolitical zone. Mm. So, so is so, that, do you think you, that you, you have to you, remember? Yeah. Two things you must remember. All these 492 people also belong to ethnic nationalities. Mm -hmm. There is nobody in Nigeria that uh, descended from heaven without an ethnic nationality. Yes, yes, but if someone so is. Everybody in Nigeria has an ethnic nationality. Yeah, but if someone is representing the retired military officers, he's going there to represent yes. them, not to represent his Soko or whatever ethnic group he's from. So what I'm saying is that don't you feel that there is an, a, a less emphasis on uh, the opinion or the views of these ethnic minorities, that emphasis seems to be on other aspects of the society? Is, well, that, is listen, that intentional? Listen to, listen to all the... Okay, let us go through. Let us go through all the various categories of, uh, of, of, of uh, delegates mm. and see which of them are not vital stakeholders in Nigeria. If you talk of the retired teachers and police and state security, I believe they are vital stakeholders in Nigeria because the security of everybody depends on them or depends on these, these institutions. Mm. So you cannot say that they are not vital stakeholders, but they also have ethnic, ethnic nationalities. They come from some ethnic nationalities. Mm. Traditional rulers come from ethnic nationalities. Everybody comes from ethnic nationalities. No, it's true. It's Retired true. Retired civil servants, these are very experienced people who have, who have served the country. Mm. They're a vital interest group in the country. Labor representatives are a vital interest group. No, I agree with you, Senator. What no. we have done is to see that all, all vital interest groups in Nigeria are represented. Mm. Now, Senator. When I tell me to talk about Nigeria, we are talking about the interest, the common interest of Nigeria. Mm. So all the vital interest groups need represented, and they are all represented. Okay, Senator, let me and ask you. The nationality is adequately represented by these sociopolitical and sociocultural groups, mm. which we have also adequately accounted for. Okay, all right, Senator, let me ask you, because people are complaining, why should the president uh, nominate the, the chairman, the deputy chairman, and the secretary of the conference? What is, what is the thinking behind that? I suppose, uh, except somebody wants to be mischievous, Certainly, when we have the national conference of 492 people, I don't see who else but the president can nominate the chairman. Why, the vice why chairman can the delegates? The why, why can the delegate do that? Why can the delegates sit down together and nominate who will be their chairman? Because that that will immediately throw the conference into controversy. Okay. It, it already, that will immediately, if I ever before the conference starts, that will immediately generate controversy. Mm -hmm. Okay. The government is not funding because this conference, and they have the right to appoint a chairman who they believe has the requisite qualities to steer the conference through successful proceedings to a successful conclusion. Definitely, it is, it is, it is the interest of the state and of everybody that this conference should be successfully held and successfully completed. Not everybody can do that. You don't pick anyone to come and chair such a conference. You need the person with the right qualities of patience, the right qualities of tolerance, the right qualities of understanding of Nigerian politics to be able to steer such a conference through mm -hmm. to success. Only the government can appoint such a person. All right, uh, let me and ask... the government has the right to oh. appoint such a person. Okay, Senator, let me ask you, because some uh, well-meaning Nigerians, they've questioned whether... Uh, the, the design of this conference is aiming at uh, uh, kind of uh, negotiating the way the structure of the country is at present. Is it possible with the design of this country when you don't have uh, sufficient people representing the ethnic nationalities at the table? Uh, because people from the labor union, from the police, from the military, from different uh, aspects, 
are at their, their primary focus are not going to be the kind of structure that people originally had in mind in terms of let's renegotiate the structure of this country. Do you think that would come no, I out? I think you are wrong. I think, I think you are wrong there. Yeah. Okay. The mere fact that you are representing labor doesn't mean that you don't have interest in the structure of this country. Every single one, no matter which, which particular constituency you represent, is interested in the basic structure of this country. In fact, the, the mere fact that you are representing a particular group doesn't mean that your interest is there only to protect the interest of that particular group. No. If you are representing labor, you are not there just to protect the interests of labor. Mm. If you are representing youth, you are not there just to protect the interests of youth. Everyone has the interest of Nigeria, the totality of what should, how, how Nigeria should be organized, how Nigeria should be structured, what power should belong to the federal government, and what power should belong to the federating units. These are concerns of all Nigerians. All the four ninety two delegates are in fact very much concerned about all these issues. Not just about the limited issues concerning their immediate constituents. Mm. All right, all right. Let's say um things go well the way you are portraying it now. So for anything to come out of this conference, there has to be a unanimous agreement or seventy five percent of no, the, no, or seventy five percent or seventy five percent of the delegates. Yes, will... Consensus or seventy five percent. Yeah. So um so do you think that contentious, serious issues about the country that we can get 75% of these delegates to agree on? Do you, do you have that kind of feeling that that will happen? You see, nothing, nothing can be expected to be perfect. If it is found, if, if the, if it is found that 75% is too high, I'm sure the, the, the conference can make representations to the appropriate authorities for a review of that particular recommendation. There is nothing that is sacrosanct or so rigid that cannot be reviewed. If it is found unworkable, I'm sure the conference itself as a body can make appropriate recommendations for a review of that particular provision. Who, who will review it? I mean, what do you mean by a review? By the government or by who will of course, review of course, it? Of course, it is the government that has issued these uh, modalities so if it is to be reviewed, it should be done by the government too. Okay, let me give an example. Let's say the conference, they got stuck uh, at the issue of what percentage of uh, revenue from the oil should go to the oil, oil producing states. And they couldn't get the 75% to agree to either increase it or reduce it. Uh, is the issue, would they go to the government and say, okay, can you re reduce the number of uh, percentage of the, the delegates needed to get this out of the conference? Or is that what you're saying? I'm sure the issue of what percentage of the delegates should be required to pass a resolution, I'm sure that issue will be set to much earlier in the life of the conference before they even go to consider serious issues. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that will be one of the very basic issues to be fundamentally resolved before the, uh, before the proceedings, proceedings really get underway. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if many people feel that 75% is too high in proviso, the conference can make appropriate the presentation to government for government to review that mm. even before they begin their serious discussions. Now, uh, the other issue is that of uh, what they call the no go areas. There have been a lot of uh, segments of issues that we are classified as no go areas. Um, what do you think about them? And there is only one issue. Okay. Not, when you say there are lots of issues, that is not correct. Okay. There is only one issue that we say the no go area, and that is the issue of dissolving Nigeria. Okay. Uh, can you tell me any other issue? No, I mean, um, every issue around people who might determine that they are not um, satisfied with the way things are in Nigeria, and if this is not, uh, this is what they want, if you don't want to give them this, that they would rather prefer not to be there. They are not, they are not, they are not, they are not asking about, they are not asking about dissolving Area is, is the idea of dissolving Nigeria. The, what is not no go area is the, 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 the dissolubility of the Nigerian unity. Mm. That is the only no go area, only one, one area. Mm. And I'm sure that one area is one that everybody accepts, it's an essential one. So we are meeting as Nigerians to see how we can have a better Nigeria, not to see how we can split up Nigeria. 
Now, um, let me ask you, in, 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 we are running out of time. This, um, this conference, yeah. what, what would be the outcome that you will consider a success? What kind of well, outcome? I consider, the outcome I would consider a success is we shall deliberate, we shall deliberate on the structure of the country and reach agreement on whether the present structure is okay, and if not, what structure do we want? We shall deliberate on the powers that should belong to the federal government and the powers that should belong to the federation units so that we have a true federalism and that we really have a federal, a, a, a federal republic of Nigeria. We shall deliberate on our most better mode of governance whether we should have continued with the presidential system or go back to a parliamentary system, all of us take a decision of what we think is better for Nigeria. And then, of course, we shall deliberate on revenue allocation and resource control and see what is the best uh, organization possible to mobilize resources to the maximum from every part of the country and utilize those resources for the maximum development of our nation. These are all very essential issues. I'm very proud, very primary issues that I think the conference wants to talk. Now, let me, let me ask you, because the, the formality, the f framework uh, was kind of uh, not clear about what happens after, after the resolutions. So, for instance, how do you make it a law, uh, whatever resolutions that came out of this? Uh, what is the, can you explain to Nigerians what is the, the process? And, and is that process going to uh, hinder whatever resolution that they came up with? You see, there were two, there are two contending viewpoints on that issue as to what will happen to the decisions and findings of the conference. One point of view was that this, these the decisions and findings should be sent to the National Assembly to form part of their constitutional review process. But there was an equally strong but even more widely held view by the majority of Nigerians that the findings of the conference the decisions of the conference should be forwarded to Nigerian people to, for in the referendum. And then once the Nigerian people have, accept, have approved it in the referendum, it should then really be enacted into a new constitution by the National Assembly. These were the two contending issues. Because the two contending issues were so strongly conversed by different people, we decided that that issue should be left for the conference itself to decide. In other words, our committee did not recommend that it should go to National Assembly. And our committee did not recommend that it should go for referendum. Our committee recommended that the conference itself should take a decision on that. In other words, they should take a decision on how they want all their conclusions and findings to be treated. Whether they want it to go for a referendum or whether they want it to go to National Assembly, we leave that is part of the conference itself. The president agreed to that arrangement, did he? Yes. Okay. What is it? No, I said, did the president agree to that arrangement where the committee will decide? Yes, of course. That is the that is the that is the final position that the president agreed to that. Yes. Okay. So. Um, and that and that is what that is what you see in the report. That is what you see in the press conference in the statement read by the secretary to the government. He says so. That the national conference itself would advise on the form. Okay. Now, uh, one final question. Um, so, based on what you've outlined now, how is this conference different from all the past ones we've seen? The way it is different is that the, the federal government is making minimal, minimal nominations. I've said that the federal government is nominating only 60, about 60 out of 492. This is a big, big departure from any conference we have had in the past. The one we had most recently was in 2005 that was held by Obasanjo. Sanjo. The federal government nominated close to 80% of the delegates. Okay. So there's a big difference. This time, people are nominating their own delegates. That is the best we want to see, and that is a big difference. Okay, uh, Senator Femi Okunrumu, thank you so much for joining yes. us. It's a pleasure. All right. When we come back, we are going to uh, talk to El Rufai, the Deputy National S Secretary of the Opposition APC. And we're going to talk to him about his experience at the 
SSS, where he was detained sometime this week. Stay tuned.